All right, so as we start chapter four here, uh, Foundations of Math 10, we're going to look, be looking at roots and powers. Okay, so we've talked about square roots before, right? Uh, you know what a, a square root is. And, um, you know, a power is something uh, with an exponent that we'll find out here. Uh, a number and an exponent, or a variable and an exponent. So you should know a little bit about these already, so we're going to explore this a bit more. Um, you should know, again, what a square root is, and some of the exponent laws. We'll go over those in maybe in a little bit more detail this chapter. But the big idea here is that any number can be written, um, that can be written as a fraction, okay, where this isn't zero in the bottom, uh, and n, these numbers are integers. That's called a rational number. So we're going to take a look at what a rational number is, what it looks like. And also, uh, there, are, there are rational numbers, there are irrational numbers. So we'll take a look at those as well. And exponents can be used to represent roots. So that's, a, that's another big idea. And reciprocals of rational numbers. A lot of this isn't going to make much sense to you, but this is what we are going to cover in this chapter. And exponent laws can be extended to include powers with rational and variable bases and rational exponents. Okay, so as we move on to the new vocabulary, we'll, we'll see that here. So, some beautiful pictures to start us off there. Okay. All right, well, let's get into our notes. <clears throat> let's start back here. And I'll get you to, uh, to write this stuff down here as we go through. So, recall. So, this means this is stuff that you already should know and you do know. So, we're going to review this uh, to sort of introduce this lesson. So, 3 squared is 9. We remember that 3 squared also can be written as 3 times 3, right? That's what 3 squared means. We also know that if you take the square root of 9, the square root of 9 is 3. And we talked about uh, a square with area, 9 units, right? And that means that the side lengths are 3. And so we kind of defined, you know, square root being the side length and so on. We also talked about powers uh, or exponents that are greater than 2, like 3. So this is 4 cubed. What is 4 cubed? Well, if you think 4 times 4 times 4, right? It's 4 times itself 3 times. So 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 4. And before you get your calculator out, okay? 16 times 4, why don't you think about it like this? All right? Think about 4 times 10. That's 40. And 4 times what? 4 times and 4 times 6. See, there's the 10 and there's the 6. So what's that? 24. So you add those up and you get 64. So if you're working on your mental math, okay, that's the way you can think about it. Multiply the 10s, then multiply the 1s and um, add them up. So this is 64. All right, so we remember that this 3 right here in the index of the radical means that it's a cube root. And so the cube root of 64 is 4, right? And we talked about, you know, a cube, an actual three-dimensional cube. And if the volume is 64 units cubed, this should be squared up here, cubed, then that means that the side length here would have to be 4. And so would the height, right? So we put that together last chapter as well. Well, we also did to the fourth, and what's two to the fourth? And again, before you get your calculator out, you probably know two squared, right? That's four. So what's four times two? That's going to be eight. Well, that's two cubed, isn't it? So two to the fourth is just eight times another two, which is 16. Good. And so the fourth root of 16 is two. Right? That's because 16 can be written as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And so if you see the same factor all uh, four times, right, like that, and that's all that there is under there, then that is a fourth root. Okay? So what's the fifth root of 32? If you understand what we're doing here, you'd probably be able to uh, answer this right away. The fifth root of 32. Without your calculators, how can you write 32 as a product of five identical factors, what number would that be? Two. Sure. Look at 16 is 2 to the 4. And so 2 to the 5 is just 16 times 2, right? And so that's 32. So because 32 can be written like this, 
That means the fifth root of 32 is 2. All right, so that's a bit of a review from, from what we've already learned. And uh, I would encourage you to go back and watch some videos if that, if that was over your head. Uh, go back and watch the videos, uh, you know, from chapter, oh, well, I guess it was chapter 3, chapter 2, chapter 1. There's all sorts of, chapter 3 was mostly uh, factoring. Um, so I guess a lot of that is, uh, you know, throughout the course. But anyways, <clears throat> I want to talk to you about powers here now. So what are powers? Well, a power would be uh, sort of a, a number or a, a letter or a variable that has some kind of exponent. So a power is, uh, this would be an example, that whole thing is a power. Okay. Now, we're going to look at something a little bit different here and, and identify sort of the things that we've been talking about here. So this whole thing, if it has a root sign in it like this, that's called a radical. All right, a radical. Is that the first time you've heard that? Yeah? Root sign, radical. I'm not sure if I've mentioned that to you or not, but... Anyways, this is a radical, the whole thing. And so we, t I think we talked about this This uh, number in here is the index. Um, but if we haven't, that's, that's what that number is. So up here, you know, that's an index of 3, an index of 4, an index of 5. If there is no number there, what's the index? 1? Agree with that? Or two? Which one is it? Yeah, it's two. Okay, because it's a square root, so it's like there's a two there. But because square root is the kind of the most common, it's really the, the lowest index that you would have. Then we don't put it there. <clears throat> okay, we wouldn't have a, a root with an index of one because that would always just, I guess, be itself. You know. So, anyways, and the number underneath here, whatever the number or letter or or uh, you know whatever is underneath there is called the radicand. Okay, it's called the radicand. All right, so I have some follow-up questions here, just to just to see how much you remember, how much you know here. Without using a calculator, what is the square root of 16? Just go ahead and shout it out. Four. Very good. Yeah, it's because four times four is 16. Okay, what's the square root of 25? Five. Okay, very good. All right, so that's that's good. That's some basic stuff that you need to know. 25 and 16 are perfect squares, right? That's that's why the result, or the answer here, is a, a whole number, right? Or a, an integer, at least. And so that's, that's a perfect, these are perfect squares. But what if I asked you this question? How can you use this knowledge from above here to approximate, or that also means to estimate, approximately, right, to estimate, what the square root of 20 is? Because even though 20 is not a perfect square, there is a square root of 20. There is some number that when multiplied by itself will give you 20. Because it's not a perfect square, it's not going to be a, um, uh, a, a whole number. So don't use your calculator right now. Just stay off your calculator right now. I don't want you to use your calculator, but instead I want you to use the above answers to approximate. So can anyone take a look at what we did right up here and even just tell me your thought process in how you would guess what the square root of 20 is. Think about that for a second. Okay, I'll get to you in a second. Think about how you would use this information. The square root of 16 is 4, the square root of 25 is 5. How would you use that information to guess what the square root of 20 is? Okay. So you would guess 4.5, okay? Because it's in between both of, okay, it's in between both of these numbers. Now, it is important to note that 4 is the square root of root 16, and that's just a little bit less than 20. And the square root of 25, which 25 is just a little bit more than 20, that's 5. So I think, I think you're absolutely right that that would be a pretty good guess. Now, this is about 4 units from 16 and about 5 units from 25. So that's pretty close to the middle. Okay. Now, let's try this without taking the actual square root of 20. Let's get our calculators on here. And let's try this. Oh, come on. Clear. Okay, quit. Nope. 
but there's all froze up. So let's get out of there and refire it up. So let's square 4.5. Okay. Uh oh. We may have an issue. So let's take 4.5 and let's square it. And what do we get? 20.25. Okay. So it's a little bit greater. 20.25 is a little bit greater than our target here. So it does make a little bit of sense that because 20 is a little bit closer to 16, that maybe this number should be a little bit closer to 4. So if we refined our guess, what would we guess, maybe? How about 4.4? Would you think about that? So let's try 4.4. Well, 4.4 squared is 19.36. So now we're a little bit under. So what might be a good next guess? What do you think? All right, very good. Whoops. Four. Let's try. Let's try 4.45. That's right in between 4.4. And 4.5. So let's give that a try. We'll just do one more here because I think you're getting the point. Oh, really close. Okay. You could probably go further than that by saying maybe 4.46 or 4.55 or okay. You probably could go on forever and ever. So let's just go ahead and do it. What about the square root of 20? What is it actually? Okay, 4.47. So if we went up to 4.6 or 4.7, you would have got pretty, pretty close. Okay, but I don't want you to just get on the calculator and type in square root of 20. I want you to think about what, you know, that might be before you just jump on the calculator and do it. Okay, all right, let's move on. Okay, now I'm, I'm going a little bit deeper here with you to see, if, uh, to see if you're kind of understanding what I think I need you to understand here. So let's work through this. First of all, what's the index of this radical? What's the index? The index is 3, right here. Everyone agree with that? That's the index. So we're talking about a cube root. Okay? What is the radicand? Did you write that down in your notes? What, what, what was? Remember from the very first page there? What's the radicand? Negative 8. Agree with that? Close. The radicand is everything underneath the radical sign. The radicand is negative 8 over 125. Okay? All right. So what do we do with a fraction? What do we do with the fraction? Well, there's a couple different ways you could write this. All right? And when you have a radical and a fraction, you can do this. You can actually separate that radical to the numerator. That's the uh, value on top. And as well to the denominator. So this is something that you can do, and that might make your life a little bit easier to think about, you know, this whole thing as two separate smaller problems. So let's talk about the denominator first. Without your calculator, can you figure out or make a good guess as to what the cube root of 125 would be? And it should be a whole number, so... Okay. What did we what do we know earlier about a cube root here? What which cube root did we um, oh 64. Wasn't 64 a cube root? Where did we have that? Yeah, cube root, 64. Okay, so that's four cubed. So let's go up higher. What about five cubed? Well, five times five is twenty-five. Twenty-five times five is actually one twenty-five. So this is five. The cube root of one twenty-five is five. Because one twenty-five is five times five times five. Now, what about this one? It, can, can we simplify this? The cube root of negative 8. So correct me if I'm wrong, but did we, not, um, did we not have a list of things like this in your notebook? You do not have a list like this? You know, where we did the cubes, right? Yes or no? You did the squares? Did you do cubes? No? Okay. Well, let's talk about cubes. What's 2 cubed? 8. It is. What's 3 cubed? 27. What's 4 cubed? 64. And what's 5 cubed? 125. Okay? So, you see the 8 here? Now, what about the negative? Is that an issue? Is that a problem? 
<clears throat> is there any way that I could get a negative value here when I cube a number? Well, what if I did this? What if I cubed negative 2? What would the answer be? Negative times a negative is positive. Positive times a negative is negative 8. So this is negative 8. So guess what? This is negative 2. You can't have a negative there in that situation. So that's the answer for the cube root of negative 8 over 125. It's a negative 2 over 5. So you see how I did the cube root of the top? Then I did the cube root of the bottom. And there we go. Okay. Okay. What about this next question here? What about the next question? What's the square root of negative 4? What's the square root of negative 4? Let's try negative 2. Okay. I think somebody said negative 2. Let's try that. What, what do we get when we multiply negative 2 times negative 2? We get a positive 4. Hmm. Um, the only way you'd get negative 4 is if you did this. But that's not a square, is it? We're not squaring the exact same number. So we have a bit of an issue here, don't we? The answer is, for you guys right now, it's undefined. There is no real number that is an answer to this. Uh, as you move through math, as you get into more advanced math, you will find an answer to this. There is an answer, but it includes an imaginary unit, if you can believe it. An imaginary, unreal part of the answer. So, this is, there's no real answer there. So, this is undefined. You'll see this in your books, and it's undefined. No solution. Okay? No solution. There's no real solution. Okay? And what I need you to know here is that, yes, we can have some negatives underneath a radical sign, but only when the index is odd. Okay. So let's just write that down as notes over here. Let's make some room over here. In red. A negative... number as a radicand is possible for odd um, indices or indexes. Okay? That's where the index is odd only. Okay? So, when I say is possible, I mean there is a real answer. Okay? So, for possible, I mean the real solution. Okay, so if you have a square root, or a fourth root, or a sixth root, or an eighth root, or a tenth root of something, which you can have, you won't be able to find a real answer if it's a, if it's a negative value in there. Okay? So if you have a negative number and an even index here, you've got a problem. All right, so we're almost done here, the teaching part. Okay, you guys, almost done. So let's take a look at this. This is um, kind of the second last really important part of, our, of my lesson. And I want you to start thinking now kind of the opposite way. I want you to really work on your the comprehension piece. If you understand this, you'll be able to do these sorts of things. So I want you to write... 3, the number 3, okay, so that means I want this to equal 3, but I want you to write it as a square root. So 3 is equal to what as a square root? So root what? Root 6? Root 6? Hmm. Not root 6, or root 66. Root 9. Very good. Okay, so 3 as a square root. It's the square root of 9. You see how we're kind of working backwards there now? You're building up. What did we have to do to 3 then? We had to square 3. That's what you were thinking of. You have to square 3. Okay, what about a cube root? Cube root of what will give me 3? Twice. 
27. Agree or disagree, everyone? The cube root of 27 is 3, so there you go. This is actually equal to 3. That's the same as 3. So we're writing 3 as a cube root. What about 3 as a fifth root? Well, this is going to be maybe a little tough. You might not be able to do this in your head, maybe. But really, again, remember, we're thinking about what is 3 to the 5, and I actually want to put 3 to the 5, to the power of 5, inside a fifth root. That's what you want to do. Right? And so what is 3 to the power of 5? It's 243. Okay, let's check that. I think you're right. How would we do 3 to the power of 5? Well, in your calculator, it might be a bit different than mine. This is my to the power of button. So make sure you know how to do this in your calculator. 243, very good. Now, you also need to know on your calculator how to find the 4th and 5th and 6th roots. Uh, there'll be slightly different functions for each calculator. I think on this one, yeah, you sh you might have a, a function that looks like this with x before a root sign. Um, so that's the one you might want to use for yours. So example, if I want to do the fifth root, I type in 5, and then I go math, and then this function here, see that? So that's saying I want the fifth root, and then you go 243. And hopefully, if I did that right, yeah, it should be 3. So you need to know how to do that in your calculator, although you also need to know how to kind of work through that um, uh, kind of mentally as well. All right? Any any questions there so far? Okay, good. You guys are being troopers here. You're almost done, okay? <clears throat> the last one I want to talk to you about, and this is going to be focused a little bit more on next section, but this is still part of the questions in your first section. What is a rational number and an irrational number? Does anyone have any idea what a rational number is or how it's defined or what it looks like or anything about a rational number? Any thoughts on that at all? Just shout them out. What's a rational number? Do you see another word inside that word rational that you recognize? Ratio. That's right. That's the word inside the word. Now listen, here's just a little note. If you see a big word that you don't know what the meaning of it is, try and find the root word. Okay? That's the word that that word, that big word, the smaller word that the big word is built on. Okay? If you don't know what a word means, try and find the root of the word and go from there. That's your huge clue. So a rational number, yeah, the root of this word is ratio. And as a matter of fact, a rational number is a number that can be written as a ratio of integers. So let's just write that down. Can be written as a ratio of integers. Okay? As a ratio of integers. So any positive or negative number, okay? Uh, is a rational number. So examples would be um, 2 over 5 or negative 3 over 10. Also, negative uh, 7 is a rational number because it can be written as a ratio. What, what would this ratio look like if it's just negative 7? What would it be over? Yeah, over 1. So because it can be written as a ratio, it's a rational number. All right. So an irrational number is a number that cannot be written as a ratio of integers. Cannot be written as a ratio of integers. Okay, and some examples here are square root of 2. Now, how do I know that cannot be written as a ratio of integers? Why do I know that it's irrational? And here's why. Because the decimal form, the decimal form, okay, never ends or repeats. So what I mean is that there's no section of the number that repeats in the decimal form. So no, it, 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 well, let's just take a look here. <clears throat> okay, so the square root of 2 
is. Now your calculator will show you uh, a certain number of decimals. And how do you know if this is the very last decimal? Well, usually your calculator screen does not get totally filled up if it in fact is the last decimal. So you're looking for whether this decimal ends, like a three is just an ending terminating decimal. This one does not terminate, okay? And the other thing is the, the repeat part. When you look at the decimal, if there are any sections that repeat over and over again, then that's actually a rational number. So the decimal form never ends, or the uh, other word for it that you'll see is terminates. It never ends or terminates, and it never repeats any section. And so if we pop back over here for a couple more notes on rational, the decimal form either repeats or terminates. Okay, so as well as can be written as a ratio of integers, the result of that, or the, the byproduct of that, is that the decimal form will either terminate or repeat. So for example, go back to our calculator, let's do 2 divided by 5. Okay, that's a rational number. And look at the decimal. 0 0.4 and it ends. You see, that's called terminating. What about 1 divided by 9? That's a rational number. What does its decimal look like? Oh, it's 0.1 repeating. See that? Okay. What about 27 divided by 99? What about that one? What does that decimal look like? Oh my goodness. Look at, do you see blocks of numbers repeating? Okay. All of these terminates, one number repeats, blocks of numbers repeat. That all gives you an indication that what you're dealing with is a rational number. All right. If you take a look at the most famous irrational number, I think, pi, look at that. There's no repeating decimals and if the calculator screen was bigger, it would be full of more numbers because it doesn't ever end. That's an irrational number. Okay? So root 2, also pi, is an irrational number. <clears throat> okay, questions so far? All right. So that is kind of your teaching on 4.1. All right? Just an introduction to powers, an introduction to radicals. Okay? So the roots and stuff. And, uh, yeah, like I say, if this is the first time for any of this, um, this stuff, then you might want to just check out some other lessons or videos or ask me questions after class or while you're doing your work, okay? So, your assignment is coming up right here.